In this section, we're going to look at problems that deal with the first fundamental theorem of calculus, which I have here. So let's first go through this one, and then we'll do an example. If a function, this is lowercase f, is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, then we have an uppercase letter here. If the uppercase letter represents the antiderivative on that same closed interval a to b, then this is the first fundamental theorem of calculus. So if I have these, these, these are called limits of integration here, the a and the b. So if I have numbers on the integral symbol, then this is what you're going to do. You're going to take the antiderivative, so we've already talked about how to do that by using the inverse power rule. We've talked about that before in a previous session. If we have these numbers that are uh, added here now, then this is what you do. Once you take the antiderivative, you're going to plug in the top number and then subtract the bottom number and you're actually going to get a numerical answer. Now all the ones we've done so far with antiderivatives, we have to put the plus c on the end. Now these kind of problems, we're not going to have a plus c on the end because we actually have numbers to, to put in to get the exact answer. Essentially what you're doing is you're trying to find the area underneath this curve f of x between a and b. So now that we've talked about the first fundamental theorem of calculus, let's look at a practice problem to uh, put this into use. Okay, so for our example that we have here, we need to use first fundamental theorem of calculus because you have these numbers that are on the integral symbol. First thing you want to do for these problems is find the antiderivative, and we'll do that by using the inverse power rule. So for here we have 3x raised to the power by 1, divide by the new power. Got to do that for the next one as well, for the 12x raise it by 1, divide by the new power, and then the 9, that's definitely x to the 0 power, that means you'll get an x after it. We're going to do a little simplifying step, so we're going to get negative x cubed, and then plus 6x squared minus 9x. At this point, we need to put in the 1 and the 3. So here's this uh, symbol that you're going to use here. This is what you're going to write. This notation means that, you've, that we have an antiderivative here and we're now ready to plug in the 3 and the 1. So this is mathematically the right notation that you're supposed to do. This is our antiderivative. So now we're going to put in 3 for all the x's. We always start with the top one. Top one goes in first. So we have this. And then you're going to take all this and subtract it with a 1 put in there for all the x's. So we have negative 1 cubed. 6 times 1 squared, 9 times 1. Don't forget that you've got to put a, a, a minus sign in front because that's what the first fundamental theorem of calculus says. And the negative uh, is subtracting the whole thing inside. That's why I'm putting this in parentheses because if you didn't put parentheses, you might accidentally just subtract the first one and not all of them. So now it's just a matter of working all this out. Now the negative here is on the outside. So the 3 is the only one that we're raising to a power of 3. You get negative 27 there. Uh, this next one you're going to get 54 minus 27. And then next, we're going to work out all the stuff inside the parentheses first. You get negative 1 plus 6 minus 9. That goes in there. So now we're just going to uh, compute all this inside here. Uh, you have a minus, and then you have for this 6 minus 9 negative 3 plus negative 1, you get a minus 4 there. However, that's actually going to change that into a positive 4 because you have a negative and a negative. So all this inside here is negative 4, makes it a plus 4 there. Okay, and then 54, this actually is all going to add up to 0. 54 minus 27 minus 27 will give you that. So your final answer is going to be 4. So what does all this mean? Okay, we're going to take a look at this now, what it actually means, and so technically what we're doing here is we're finding the area underneath a curve, and so I'm going to make a quick sketch of this graph over here to show you what it is that we're actually doing. So if you were to graph this one out, uh, it, would, it would cross the x-axis at 1 and 3 if you were to factor this, and because it's a negative that means it's a parabola that's opening down, and so the, if you were to, to calculate the uh, the vertex there, that would happen here at 3, and so the graph itself is going to look like this. So, what we're doing is we're actually finding 
this area right here. Now the other way to, of doing this would be to try and use geometric formulas. We've done that before in a previous section. However, you can't apply that here because we don't actually have a geometric formula that fits this particular curve. So that's why we need to use first fundamental theorem of calculus. And also, we're moving away from solving this by the limit process. The limit process is a long drawn out method. So you don't, you don't have to solve these, these kind of problems unless it specifically tells you to use limit process. Otherwise, if it doesn't say limit process, then do it this way. Do it using the first fundamental theorem of calculus.